and there was like 30 seconds of stunned silence and he tried it and then he turned around to the entire sales floor and said guys come here everybody come here mark's got something to teach us Welcome again to It Doesn't Take a Genius, conversation with introspective perspectives and pithy points of view. Here are your hosts, my friends, Max and Marty. I think that's Mark and Mike. Yeah, whatever. Ramsey! Marshall, it's uh, great to see you today and your uh, your somewhat thin friend that you have behind you on the uh, on the background there. Yep, my man Bones uh, and I would like to wish you a happy Halloween, uh, on uh, this, uh, October thirty first. Same to you. Same to you, Mike. It's a uh, it's a fun time of the year, and uh, uh, we have the autumn playlist at at my house uh, with uh, some scary songs as well as some autumn songs. And uh, I, I just this is the beginning of the season. Like as soon as Halloween's over, I begin Advent. Thanksgiving Christmas time and I'm really excited about it. So we're just 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 happy to be here. But but you know what? Today we we should tell some scary tales. Ooh, scary tales. Uh man, I I, I oh, I'm a little scared. <laughs> like, <laughs> like like a Stephen King, a Dean Koontz kind of thing. Uh, what are we talking about here? Well, not not to my knowledge, but I I you know you and I were sort of talking about this, uh, that, you know, there are some things managers do that are, that are just kind of scary. Like when, the, when you think about the ramifications downstream of their behavior and, um, and I've just, I've just thought of some random ones. I bet you're going to think of some as we talk. I, I don't know how this will go. This may be like a five hour episode and we're just going to cut it off at 20 minutes to 30 minutes because we have to, but, um, like here, here's, here's one just to, just to get the ball rolling, you know, just to sort of, just to sort of, sort of push us across the curb here. Um, I uh, was calling on a store uh, years ago. This was a car dealership. Um, they were uh, multiple site. So a decent, decent size, you know, auto group, uh, smaller, but a, but a multi-campus auto group. And uh, the, the dealer's son was in charge in the business. We, we say that he had a PhD, Papa had a dealership. Um, super nice guy, uh, never did anything. Couldn't get him to, couldn't get him to actually do anything. And they had serious CSI problems. Their customer service scores were, were pretty low. And so I kept trying to figure out ways to pin him down to say, I'm going to get you and managers in a room together. And we're going to talk about an action plan so that we actually make progress here. Cause it was not going well. And morale was, was starting to drift. And so I finally had him uh, pinned down uh, to a day. I had a commitment from him that he was going to be there. I drove, I believe, four hours, as I recall, uh, to get to this dealership. And um, and he's not there. Uh, no problem. The meeting hasn't started yet. But, uh, you know, we, uh, I, I, we get close to start time and he's not there. And, you know, give him another half hour, he's not there. And so... Finally, I, I break down and, and call, um, you know, you don't want to be that guy, but like, where are you? You know, so I call a cell phone. Um, this dealer, by the way, was um, in the mountains. And uh, so I'm, I'm up on, you know, kind of a, a higher area. Back th This is back in the day when we didn't have cell towers all over the place, but I'm sort of outside of the store, you know, up on a hill, uh, <laughs> making sure I have coverage. And, um, and I, I, I get an answer. He immediately answers. And he says, hello. And then I hear, oh, 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 It's like, uh, and I won't say his name, but John Doe, uh, hey, where are you? And he said, ah, it was just such a nice day, Mark. Said, yeah. Well, I just decided I, I didn't want to waste it. So I flew to the beach. Um, it's just a great day here at the beach. Okay. All right. And that was the end of that. Like uh, they, the, the <laughs> dealership is out of business now, as I understand. <laughs> what is well, that? There's the scare, you know, it's funny. And then it's scary because like, man, you know, you, you could have saved the whole thing. It could have, you know, th this could have worked out for you, but he, uh, the, the call of the ocean was just too great for him. So, yeah. 
<sighs> yes, the man in the sea. Yes, right. yes, the ocean <laughs> waves, the the salt air in my nostrils. It was just too inviting. Uh, or I could be up on top of a mountain saving a multi million dollar business. <laughs> right. Right, right. I was like, oh, I care about this more than he does, and that's. That's a cardinal sin. You can't care more than the client does. So, oh yeah, yeah. If anything, if he if he just cared a tiny bit more, he'd have had all of you meet him. <laughs> right inside, we would have been having lobster and talking about the the fate of the business yeah. and what we could. Yeah, he do. took the private plane. I mean, we could have had at least three of us in the in the plane with him, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah, that would be enough to save this business and all the <laughs> family's livelihoods that were dependent upon it. Right. Uh, while he's there complaining that the uh, the butter separated before he could eat his lobster. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. It's a hard wow. life. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> the uh, Yeah, you, you know, it, well, it goes, you know, you're thinking, all right, we're on the same plane. We have the same goals. Uh, you know, everybody wants success. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no. Yeah, until you, until you ask it, until you truly think you've gotten to them to tell you the truth, the, the, the absolute honest truth, uh, yeah. you really don't know if your goals are aligned or not. Yeah. And that was a, that was an early on rookie mistake of mine, you know, to, <laughs> to not contract with the guy, you know, well, and I thought I had contracted, right. You know, like we're going to have a meeting and we're going to, but it, it wasn't actually what was important to him. The, the real question was, what is your agenda? And, you know, who knows? He might have said, I hate this business. I'd like to get in a position to sell. Great. We can do that. Let's make that happen, you know. But, um, yeah, so just scary. You think of all the lives, uh, livelihoods on the line and, you know, just completely ships passing in the night if you don't mind me using another nautical term so oh yeah 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 no i'm picturing him now he's running bubba's bait shop <laughs> right. chicken emporium it's probably fabulous but but yeah just making the assumption that yeah the other guy cares as much as you do yeah uh, about his own business about his own doggone business yeah perfect Man, so, that is terrifying. That's my first story. <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, while you were talking, I thought of one. The uh, I knew it. So yeah, you sparked it. I remember. And there again, same thing. Early in the early in the biz, uh, right? I got I'm in this I'm in this business, and all the managers are complaining about all the other managers and what you know what they're not doing, and now their departments hurt my department. Well, you know, and I was like, hey, I got an idea. What if we all got in the same room and met together? <laughs> and they, they were like, huh? So I go to the owner and I, hey, I'd like to get all the leaders of your various departments in the same room and, and we'll just talk through some of these issues they're having. That'd be fantastic. I'm like, okay. So I call this meeting, we get together, and we knock out the two or three big items that they've, you know, they'd all been complaining about, but not talking to each other about. Yep. And then they just started talking about all this random stuff. They were talking about how the parking lot was laid out and they were talking about, about the tile in the bathroom needed to be changed. And then they were talking about <laughs> it just the, the parking and, the, and, and I kept going, all right, this is a good meeting. Let's wrap it up. You know, come on guys. This, you know, we got, let's get back to work. We've, you know, we, 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 we covered everything on the agenda. And then they started talking about lighting in one of the rooms and, and, and this, and, and this meeting went on for two more hours. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, this is the worst meeting I've ever run. Oh my gosh, this is, they're going to fire me. This is, you know, this is just <laughs> chaos. And I was like, come on guys. And they would just ignore me. And they just kept talking. And finally we're with their, they, they just ran out of energy and they we were all leaving the room. And I go, I, I'm sorry. That was the worst meeting I've ever hosted. And the one guy goes, that was awesome. <laughs> like it was, he goes, yeah, that's the first time we've ever met. <laughs> it's our very first meeting. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, like this week, this month, <laughs> this year, he goes, no, I've been here 12 years. Oh my goodness. We've never met as a management team. Oh, and, and, and then, you know, like, oh, they've been saving up. This is pent up. For, for over a decade, all these little things that they needed each other to talk about. Oh my goodness. And, you know, I was like, well, what if we, what if we did this like every couple of weeks? 
<laughs> that would be awesome. You know, and you're going, this is a multi-million dollar enterprise. It's successful. There's the scary part. Yeah, yeah. it's successful. It's working. Yeah. But there was this, you know, there's this dysfunction of just people not talking to each other. It, oh. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was just... I was I was terrified. I was mortified. I was I was incredibly proud that I you know accidentally <laughs> pulled something off that you know hadn't <laughs> happened in yeah maybe since the existence of the company. Risky move. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was out there, man. Like, let's just get in the room and talk. That's, That's great, that Marshall guy. He's genius. <laughs> what, what a smart guy. <laughs> that guy. Reminds me of the store that uh, I uh, the the owner would fly in. Uh, from the coast to be at the meetings and he was you know sort of semi-retired and um, I kept thinking it's a it's a small store we're not doing that much I don't know what he gets out of coming to meet with me like I'm I'm kind of low on the totem pole but he's always here for these meetings was, I, I sort of felt like honored and scared at the same time like what you know what what is it that that is making this valuable to him and then one day he was pecking on the computer during our meeting and I said you know you know you can do control C to copy and then control V to paste. And there was like 30 seconds of stunned silence and he tried it. And then he turned around to the entire sales floor and said, guys, come here, everybody come here. Mark's got something to teach us. So I was there. I was their Microsoft office tutorial system. So it was a great day. Anyway, I, so I have another scary story. All right. This one has to do with, um, well, I'll just tell the story, but I have to censor it. So <laughs> I'm uh, now more intrigued. Oh, yeah, yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, um, you know the, the, this and this will be my final story. I, I'll sort of summarize several stories this way, but um, it, it is not uncommon for you and I to have experienced, uh, especially in car dealership world, but other clients as well, where there's an owner who just has trouble with his temper and says things that he regrets later, if he's smart enough to realize what he's caused. Um, and my my favorite example of that uh, was um, the service manager was trying so hard to pump up a service advisor who had uh, just had a perfect survey return, glowing comments. And uh, they, they almost sort of worked around the, the owner, you know, like they just, they, they, they had a business in spite of the guy, you know, he was so just such a wet blanket, so negative. So, you know, so caustic. And so they thought that, you know, the service manager thought, surely this will be a home run. I know in his head, he was like, this is a perfect, it's a layup. I'll just hand him the ball and he'll, you know, uh, pump up this employee. Uh, Mr. Dealer, uh, look, look what uh, our service advisor here uh, got. Look at this, sir. Read the comments. And this, uh, this dealer, took the paper survey, read it, no change in facial expression, threw it back on the service advisor's desk and began walking away and then said, what did you do? Give her a, and then inserted a, a sexual performance that uh, I assume runs higher dollar than some of the normal prostitution. And, um, and that was literally it. Like that was the end of the conversation. Again, a little bit of a theme here that dealership is out of business um the the employees you know just in droves would uh would leave that place and and turn over turn over turn over and 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 finally they they had to sell so yeah um uh that's the scary part right like like it's ridiculous that that happened in a in a professional work environment i guess uh kind of funny um, but also really scary because that was, you know, that was one of those nails in the coffin, like, you know, okay, I get it. The owner truly doesn't care. Like that was as good as it got for him. That was, that was as much as he could carry. So I'm out. <laughs> yeah. And, and somehow they made money. <laughs> oh, tons yeah. of money. Yeah. That's tons a, of money. Yeah. 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 D despite the dysfunction. Like yep. money's being made. That's yep. the part that always, you know, it's much more difficult now uh, than it was 20 or 10 years ago. Right. Uh, but yeah, at that point, uh, yeah, the, the business was, was, you know, it was obviously good enough that, that despite the poor leadership, it could still make money. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, 
So yeah, all right, here's one. The the I had this store, and uh, this was a, a franchise store, so it was owned by a bigger uh, corporation. Yeah. And that corporation, you know, the headquarters was like three states away, and they had a corporate plane. Okay. So they had a corporate airplane, corporate jet, and and the corporate jet would only fly to this store when they wanted to fire somebody. Hmm. So. So the store personnel, the people at the store, paid the guy at the private airport monthly so that when the plane landed, he would call them <laughs> and let them know <laughs> that the corporate jet had just touched down. And so he and they had, you know, they knew they had 20 minutes. <laughs> so like, hey, 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 you know. You know, you know, the pie is out of the <laughs> oven. <laughs> you know, there's some, some cryptic code and fox is in the hen house. Yeah, yeah, fox is in the hen house. Uh, yeah, snake and eggs. <laughs> you know, so so everybody would run around and they'd get the store straightened up real quick, and then everybody'd get a cardboard box to put their personal belongings in. Oh, that is sad. And and they would come in and they, you know, they always wore the, you know, the, the standard IBM attire, the dark suit, yeah. white shirt, red tie. They'd come in and they'd lay waste to, you know, two or three people. It, what the, they, in less than 18 months, they fired three of the, the general managers of that store. Uh, I mean, it was just, it was just chaos. And, and the, so, you know, they, they kind of, like I said, they, they, they got used to it. They developed a system, right? Yeah. They were paying a guy, <laughs> you know, the, and it was that regular. And then uh, I remember I was, I was, I was working in there one day and, uh, and the, the top guy came up to me and he says, listen, he says, uh, I need you to do me a favor. I said, what's that? He says, uh, you can't wear a suit here anymore. Oh, right. He says you're wearing a suit with, you know, dark suit, yeah. white shirt. He says, every time the employees catch a glimpse of you out of the corner of their eye they go oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they shudder they go get a cardboard box they run to the parking lot and hide you know, it was just uh, you know just this total fear this total terror uh, that at any moment with the, no notice the plane would land and they just lay waste to some of the oh, people that's great that is great and and i guess this is the theme um that group got sold <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even start off with a theme i bet i know what that group is now that you now that i'm thinking about it i bet i know yeah 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 somebody else bought it and doing much better with it uh, yeah with a different that's good leadership style so well i i will say uh that sort of semi-related i i had a store that was bought that was uh, assigned to me it, it, it turns out these are all car dealership stories who knew um, and the, uh, the dealership, uh, had no idea that they were in my program. And so I showed up and like, tried to wander around and find somebody who would talk to me, you know, like his general manager. Oh no, he, he got let go. Uh, no, I thought you all just bought the, yeah, it's, uh, it's a long story. And so I talked to this one guy and, um, so on my way home, um, I get a phone call from the dealer. And he owns like, I don't know, he owned like 20 different stores in multiple states. And he is, he's like, don't ever come back to my store. I'm just telling you right now, don't come back to my store. I'm sorry. What? Like, like you're in the program. He's like, we're trying to get out. Like, well, but you understand, like, until you get out, which they're not going to let you do, you have like free money. If we just hit the, I don't care about the effing money. Ah, I just lost control. And it turns out that he had had. Uh, a, a succession of three different general managers in the store and every one of them had robbed him. So <laughs> again, the store was sold. Uh, he no longer has that dealership. It's been closed, but uh, oh yeah, just, I mean, we could go on and on about, we can't go on and on. We have to leave people, uh, you know, feeling, uh, just feeling good about their Halloween. You know, that's really what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully these scary stories have helped sort of set the mood for you on um, things maybe that you don't want to do. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, yeah, I've, uh, I'd like to talk longer, but uh, we've got to reach out to uh, Harry Houdini. Uh, it's just <laughs> one night a year that we get to converse. Uh, so we'll be having a little seance. It's going to be fun. Yikes. Uh, yeah, should be great. Uh, he's a card. 
Um, and before we do that, uh, let's turn it over to, uh, you know, our member of The Walking Dead, uh, Mr. John Wolf. And that's a wrap. The musings of Mark and Mike. No rights reserved, etc. Feel free to share and discuss what you heard today. Even claim the ideas as your own. <laughs> Who'd want to do that? See you next time on It Doesn't Take a Genius. Thanks. That's good enough.